Hey peeps, Jess here, and today we are taking on Gold Belly. For those of you who are new to Gold Belly, it's kind of like just this giant online food marketplace. Think Etsy, but small food vendors. Some not so small, some very, very small. A while back, I covered Gold Belly. I think it was like three years ago, and I've always wanted to do a retest because I felt like it needed one. So now there was a sale, and so I finally picked up Coclet. This is a Brazilian bakehouse in Philadelphia whose specialty is, uh, this is my favorite dessert name ever now, Bol de Roll, which I'm probably mispronouncing, but I still love it, which is basically a Swiss cake roll with a super duper thin cake. Guava jam is a traditional filling, but clearly we've got options today. So I ended up getting choose your own. I got gingerbread and dolce de leche, which is seasonal, the orange and caramelized milk, the passion fruit, double chocolate, classic guava, and the vegan carrot and chocolate. The recommendation on the sheet is 10 minutes room temperature. It's had more than that thanks to me starting this video. Also, I got stickers this time, so that's pretty cool. I am surprised at how long these are good for because it says seven days at room temperature and it got about five days in transit, so e, we're cutting it close here. And it also comes with a QR code in case you need more info. But let's start with the classic guava. Before I dive in, can we just talk about these layers? Imagine how long it took to make this and the practice and the skill. Just wow. It's a very dense cake, so that's not surprising with how much stuff is in here. Cheers. It's almost like a layered candy. The jam is super sweet and floral and fruity in that good way it like fresh, like caramelized guava can be. And the guava is the starring note. Like you're getting guava, sweetness, and then a little bit of vanilla softness from the cake underneath. I wish I'd been able to try it fresher to see how the cake is a bit fresher. It does feel like it's gone a little stale over time, but it's still just really clearly well executed. This is a labor of love right here. So next we have the passion fruit. Similar density to the cake. Cheers. This tastes like straight up passion fruit ganache. Like if you told me this was the center of a truffle, I would believe you. You get that, again, that intense floral tropical note, but it's a bit sharper than guava if you haven't had passion fruit before. Not by which, it's more like there's a high sugary sweetness to it, then it becomes more floral. I feel like guava is more like stronger in the end notes and passion fruit is more forward noted. It's hard to explain until you've had them. There's definitely a je ne sais quoi to passion fruit and guava. So this is the orange and caramelized milk and I love how the dolce de leche is just seeping through. I'm hoping it's gonna be even softer than before. Cheers. It is intensely orange, like wow orange. The dolce de leche sweetness is there underneath, but the orange is just intense. I kind of wish this had dark chocolate to sort of rebalance it a bit more because it's so much orange, from at least for me. It packs a lot of flavor in that bite, I will let you know. So this is the vegan carrot and chocolate and all I'm getting right now, all I'm smelling is chocolate. Don't get me wrong, it smells awesome. It just really strongly smells of chocolate right now. It's a bit denser than the other ones, but I kind of expect that with a lot of vegan cakes, either they go super fluffy or super dense. Cheers. This one sadly is probably my least favorite so far and not because it's vegan. The texture isn't actually the problem. It's more that the carrot and the chocolate aren't working together. And so you get carrot and chocolate and sort of a soft carroty noted cake and then chocolate, kind of bittersweet, but not really strongly dark, not really strongly milky sweet, just kind of a middle ground, like a 50 to 60% chocolate. Because of that, they're not working together. You get carrot, chocolate, carrot, chocolate as you bite rather than carrot and chocolate. I've had carrot truffles before and they were excellent, so I know carrot chocolate can work. It is not working here yet for me. I think it's really close, like really, really close. They're onto something. This is the double chocolate, the Brigadero, which I'm very mispronouncing, forgive my Portuguese. And interestingly enough, it smells less like chocolate than the carrot and chocolate cake did. It's a softer cocoa smell and more muted in a way that I just associate with cake. Like if I was making a cake sponge, this is exactly what I would expect it to smell like. Cheers. Super mellow texture in between ground between straight up chocolate frosting and a chocolate truffle is this cake. It's very softly cocoa. It's not nearly as intense as I was expecting. It kind of reminds me of how icebox cakes soften out more than the other ones. The other ones were more like eating a truffle center, like a dense truffle center. This is fluffier feeling. I do personally wish it was a bit more intense, but it does also really remind me of the Brigadero's I have had. So that's, that's really cool. 
All right, last we have the Pond de Mel or the Spiced Honey Cake Roll. And I swear I wish you had smell vision right now because it smells so good in here. This is the one that's also listed as gingerbread and it is really, really beautifully gingerbread. Like that lovely ginger smell, a bit of cinnamon going on. I believe this also has dolce de leche in it. So that'll be a nice, sweet, spicy touch. Ooh, and this is probably the softest cake. We'll see. Cheers. The flavors are so good. Okay, I'm having trouble quite explaining it because you have a really powerful spice note. Not in a bad way, just like, it's like gingerbread warming spices. And then you have the undercurrent of the sweetness from the caramel. Yeah, it's not really caramel noted. It's more like the caramel sort of rounds out the notes because it's just really gingerbread noted. But I'm okay with that. This is delightful. This is hands down my favorite of the whole batch. And sadly, it's seasonal. Wow, though. It's got just a bit of heat. Like there's just enough ginger to give it an edge. But that sweetness from the Dolce de Leche just rounds it all out together. I, I like this very much. So first, my thoughts on Coquelet. Then we're talking Gold Belly. Coquelet, I would gladly buy from again. I was pleasantly surprised. And I really also don't think this was a super fair review in that... They had to wait a few days in the fridge and it was quite a long trek from Philadelphia to Seattle. So it's kind of like the worst possible situation and they were still pretty darn good. I don't think they're gonna like entirely wow people and they're having to ship that far. Like I think the closer you can get from Philadelphia, the better, but they were still pretty good and I enjoyed eating them. So if you like cake pops or cake truffles, you're probably really gonna enjoy these. Just know that they're incredibly filling. Like I'm full. I hope you give them a try. That being said, now let's talk about Gold Belly. At the end of the day, some stuff will ship better than others. And so I'd recommend buying those rather than expecting everything to be perfect right now because everything's delayed. Save your sanity. It's, it's not worth it. The other tip I have actually for Gold Belly is that not all the Gold Belly vendors only ship on Gold Belly. So Craftsman and Wolves, for example, actually has more stuff on their website and sometimes cheaper. I will say Gold Belly has more overall sales. So if you're trying to time a sale in general, you're more likely to see a sale or a discount on Gold Belly than you are on a direct website. But the direct website might also have cheaper shipping. They might have more options. Basically, it's worth comparison shopping at the minimum. That's kind of the problem with Gold Belly. Like, it feels like, as this big marketplace, you should be able to get free shipping or at least reduce shipping for smaller items, and you can't. It's really just from the vendors, and so it's down to, is the vendor able to ship things in a way that can actually get to you okay, even accounting for the state of shipping right now? Coquelet, for example, only ships through Gold Belly, so that's it for your options. And I did manage to get them on sale, put the price here because I cannot remember what I actually spent. It's not the cheapest thing, but for trying something new to me that's tasty, that has a vegan option, that's a really great thing to have for like a birthday party or a special treat. So to sum up, Coquelet, pretty good. Excited to try it again. I definitely still think it was a little stale from what it could be, and then there's even more potential there. Two, comparison shop when you're on Gold Belly. You never know what you might find. And three, they have sales use them. So with that, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Have you tried Coquelet? Have you tried Gold Belly? I'd love to hear your thoughts or if there's something else I should have tried. Should I have brought back donut plants to be more equal? I am all for ideas here. And with that, I'll catch you next time. Later! All the cake for me. Best part of editing.